Do you have a secret? Something you've never told anyone before in your life? If you haven't, congrats, you've led a very nice, clean life. I certainly haven't. Hi, everyone, I'm Yvonne. Today, I'm going to share with you my dirty little secret. And ironically, through doing so, share with you why we should continue keeping secrets instead of coming out with the truth. I come from Singapore, and in my country, there is a very strong focus on education. Back in high school, I was the typical good girl. I got straight A's on my report card. I never dated. My hobby was reading. In, in short, I was every Singaporean parent's dream. But it all went crazy when I entered university. <laughs> okay, no worries. Let's see if this works. I joined the cheerleading team for the simple reason that it looked fun. And I found out that it was fun, but there was a really dark side as well. For most of you who don't know, cheerleading is a sport with very strict weight restrictions. If you happen to be too heavy, you weigh down the whole team because you can't perform. I was 50 kilograms then, and I was repeatedly told to diet by my seniors. After ages and ages and ages of trying everything and being unable to slim down, my self-esteem hit rock bottom. That was when I decided I had enough. I think some of you might understand that when you're at your lowest point in life, that is when you make the biggest life-changing decisions because that is the point where you don't care about the consequences anymore. For me, that moment happened when I chanced upon a video online of a woman doing a certain activity. It was an activity that required strength and verve. It was an activity that was pretty well hidden from society. It was an activity that was very, very scandalous. And that is how, one month later, I found myself doing this. I know what you're thinking, and no, I did not become a stripper. <laughs> you are very, very close though. I became a pole dancer. For most of you who probably have never tried it before, pole dancing can be divided into two parts, the tricks and the dancing. The tricks involve some, doing some kind of athletic stunt using the pole, and they vary in difficulty based on your flexibility and your strength. This one, for example, is called the layback. It's really easy. All you have to do is squeeze your legs together really, really, really tightly and lay back. That's it, A, B, C. As for the dancing, they can be done in any style to any music. I've seen pole dancers do graceful ballet-inspired routines. I've also seen pole dancers dance to heavy metal. In short, I was addicted. And within a year, here is how my body changed. I could hold my entire body weight with just my hands alone, upside down with killer heels. Those are 15 cm tall, by the way. Killer heels, and I could look absolutely fabulous while doing it. So yeah, pole dancing, pushing women to go beyond their limits every single day. At this point, you must be asking, so Yvonne, where is all this awesomeness happening? I want to see. And I say, in a commercial pole studio, of course. There's one in almost every city, but chances are you've never seen one before. Do you know that there's one right here in Takadano Baba? Yeah, right beneath your noses. The pole studio which I go to is very well hidden. It hardly does any advertising, or its students come in through word of mouth. The classrooms are all covered the windows are all covered. Non-students are not allowed to enter. Pictures are forbidden of other people unless you get their express permission. All of this is very hush-hush. So, this brings me back to my topic, secrets. We associate secrets with negativity. 
we think that they are associated with lies, dishonor, disgrace. After all, if you are not doing anything bad, why do you need to keep secrets? For example, in marriage, if you keep a secret from your spouse, many people consider that to be a form of cheating. But today, I want us to rethink secrets. I want us to rethink the function of secrets. Why keep a secret? Because sometimes, a secret and keeping a secret could be an act of creation. Take a moment to take that in. My Pole Studio values privacy a lot, and this is for the sake of its students. Many of the students in Singapore enter pole dancing because there's something about themselves that they want to fix. They think they are wrong, there's something that, yeah. It could be their confidence, they might not think they're sexy enough. Everyone has their personal problems, so they think pole can be the solution. But they come in feeling ashamed. Why? Because the majority of women who are learning pole dancing in Singapore are aged 30 to 40 years old. They are usually pretty flabby. And they know that they don't fit society's image of a young, pretty, sexy pole dancer. Do you know how much courage that takes to even do that first step and walk in? If the pole studio did not provide so much <coughs> privacy, they would never have dared to take this leap at all. And that's why keeping a secret can help to create empowered identities. It's because the studio is so private. It's precisely because you can't see what's going on inside. That's why all these women, they are free to dance. The act of practicing is so unglamorous. Anyone who've ever, who's ever played an instrument or tried to rehearse for theater should know. I fell down on my head right after the previous photo. Yeah, so no grace at all. But because of this privacy, because these pole dancers can keep their hobbies a secret, they can create new identities that would not have existed otherwise. In addition, the pole studio is also pretty hidden from public eye which means that they are shielded from all that noisy debate that's happening outside. We live in an aggressive world. It is a world where if you make a single wrong opinion on social media, you will be open to attacks from a million of faceless strangers. It is a world of activism where, people, where strangers identify each other by their affiliations, where people are busy yelling at each other on whether feminism is a boon or a scorch on society, on whether religion or atheism is better, on whether sexual images of women are empowering or not. And in this kind of environment, the fact that the post studio is so hidden away, so disconnected, allows it to create a depoliticized safe space where women can just forget about all this noise just for a while. When you walk into the pole studio, you leave your affiliations at the door. I've met a pole dancer who is a Muslim. I've met a pole dancer who is strongly anti-feminist, who told me proudly, I think men should rule the world. I've met pole dancing mothers who bring their toddlers in to pole performances where they are gyrating nearly naked women on stage. All of this is so scandalous, right? But no one bats an eye, and I think that's amazing. Don't get me wrong. All this debate is important. Ideological conversation is the only means by which we can progress and mature as a society, where we can develop our ideas. But it's also not wrong to admit that it gets tiring sometimes. And the fact that the pole studio is so secret allows women to come in and just have fun. So here's a quick summary at this point. Keeping a secret can help in the creation of empowered identities and safe spaces. My main message for you today is that secrets are necessarily bad. There are a million whole new worlds out there where you can flourish precisely because they are kept hidden away. Here's my challenge for you. Go find a secret that you can own. 
go read up more on that secret subculture which you've always been sneaking glances at but never really dared to enter. You never know. A closed room just might be where unlimited possibilities begin. Thank you.